come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, dear listener. We appreciate you listening to this episode. We've got at least a couple hundred of them already on file on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, and more. Uh, click the subscribe or like button that helps us out and helps spread the word of the Saturday night freak show to all the corners of the globe. Like a disease. Listen to them all, collect them, share them with their friends. There you go. Every Saturday night we watch a movie. Then we sit around the bar and talk about it for your listening pleasure. And these are the internet radio superstars who will bring it to you. Sean. Holly. Travis. And I'm Colin. And I want to tell you that we've added something special to this episode. Uh For the next four episodes, since there's four of us, uh, at the end of each episode, after our (laughs) wrap-ups, we're going to (laughs) do... I have my fingers out. There are four on the finger. Uh, We're going to do our favorite. Our best? Favorite. I don't know. Favorite. It's got to be favorite. Favorite. <laughs> favorite. You can't this, this say has best. Been, we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks, and this has been a debate yeah. for a couple weeks. Because what do you do? <laughs> well, I guess There's maybe two everybody different does lists. their own. Yeah. <laughs> right. So maybe everybody makes their own decision. Yeah. Cause this, on, no, because we're just sitting here ridiculing each other. Like, that's not the best. You're full of shit. That's definitely not the best. <laughs> we can't do that. So just favorite. So it's got to be yeah. favorite. All right, so tonight we're going to find out, because it is October, This is, we're going into Halloween month, so Travis, who chose tonight's movie, is going to tell us his favorite horror movies after uh, we review his movie. What, top 10? This is the other part that we've been arguing about. Is it top 10? Top 10? Top 5? Top 10. Better be top 10. Okay. I can't right, 10 or 15. Or 10 I'll just throw a bunch out movies. there. We'll just... He's just going to talk until we say stop. <laughs> yeah, we'll be like, and then this one, and then that. Oh, that <laughs> one's good. Number 42 was a toss-up. <laughs> so what was the movie that we watched tonight, Travis? We watched The Bad Seed from 1956. 56. Directed by... Mm, Mervyn Leroy. Mervyn Leroy, or Leroy, whatever. In this movie, it's Leroy. It looks like it's spelled Leroy. Or what, what's the first name? Mer- Mervin. Mervin, yeah. Mervin? Mervin your, yeah. your name is Mervin. That's crazy. <laughs> and right. there's a character Mervin. named Leroy? Leroy? There is a character there named Leroy. Character. Wow. This is, a, it is based on a book by a guy named William March that I want to say the book was written in 1954. So, I mean, this they thing kind of like. Yeah, this thing kind of rose to. Uh, well, the play also came out in 1954. Oh, really? Very so maybe good. the book is a little earlier than. No, I'm it was sure. 1954. Oh, shit. Yeah, so this was like, like this right was, on Everything it. must have been a hit. Yeah. It's yeah, like, great so, book, let's make a play. So here's my question for you, Travis, if you know the answer to this. Uh, I'm going to assume one way, but I, maybe you know. So the phrase bad seed, does it begin with this book? Does that I where it enter the popular lexicon? I don't necessarily lexicon? think so. I can't necessarily say. I mean, later in the review, I'll, I'll get down to what I think the political aspects of this movie are. But I don't think this necessarily coined the phrase bad seed. No, it may have actually come from like... I was like, that's psychology, not... like like it kind of does in the movie, like that's maybe all this... something yeah. through research for his book. Or I just think they're thinking of a way to, I mean, the same way an Atomic Monster movie simplifies, like, you know, what you see when radiation grows, you know, the bad seed is just a quick way to explain the science of this movie, right? Mm-hmm. Um... So there was no quick way to explain the, the science of this movie. That's why it was two hours. Oh, dude, long. like I said, read the book. Like if you read the book, I mean, you go into the psychology of every character, every mm. single character. Because I mean, this I mean, this movie came out. Well, I can't really say like what it came out around. Um, so I'll just talk necessarily. Well, I've got a little insight into oh. what where what inspired it. I suppose, uh, according to you know my sources. Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> at this point in time, in the 50s, there was more reported occurrences of juvenile delinquency. Apparently, like, I mean, if, if this had been a phenomenon, it wasn't reported well, on. Well, that's why the Tales of the Crypt was. comics and all those things, like juvenile delinquency in the 50s was supposedly a huge thing. Because it was a new phenomenon. Well, it's because all those kids... Their parents had money, I get from World War II, right? These are the kids that didn't need to worry about that whole like the threat of war. Even though I want to say this movie takes place around the Korean War, right? Is that what the father character was kept? Uh, if it was a contemporary story, something like that. Yeah. I'm not sure when the Korean. But War But I guess was. the That's idea why we movies, not history. 
what came into <laughs> popular culture then was the scientific uh, debate, I guess, of nurture versus but this, nature. But even you know, before are that, you born bad or do you learn? You know, does your environment shape you? I mean, this bad? is what's so weird about this movie, right? Because I mean, I mean, this is what Hitler was about, right? This is called eugenics. This is the idea that we could take um, evolution in our own hands and weed out the bad genes, right? And in there's actually a movie in 1934 that was banned called uh, Tomorrow's Children. You can I want to say you can watch it on YouTube, and it's about a woman and her family um, are threatened by the state to be um, sterilized because they've got alcoholism and criminalization in their family, you know. But everybody obviously saw it for like, what the fuck is it? It's telling you know, it's saying that you know you're gonna like pick and choose, yeah. and then of course the whole Hitler thing happened. And then somehow it still like stuck around as a good idea. And I think that's because we took all the scientists from Germany and brought them into America under uh, that project um, paperclip. paperclip. So I think that's where eugenics still stayed like relevant. Or I mean, well, it's a legitimate science, I guess. The idea it of is, but it's a like very genetic trait, but it's a very whatever. dangerous science because well, then yeah. you have it's the application to, of the data. I you absolutely <laughs> have to exactly the application, Hitler, exactly. Like, well, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people like talk about you, the good you make Hitler's some very good points, exactly. But it's just like how he went about it. It's yeah. just like the whole. But that's usually that's what eugenics does end up to me. You are picking like who are you to choose what's the right. good and bad genes of somebody? Right. Yeah, right. It is going to be murder to somebody. Mm. You know. <laughs> Because it's like, what? You don't want my gene? You know? Yeah. Oh, no. So this movie uh, explores it. Uh, I mean, if you've seen this movie, you might be like, well, what the fuck? This isn't like a crazy, creepy, like horror movie or a cult movie. But I would say, like, out of the horror, like, if you look, if you don't look at, like, the universal horror movies, if you just look at some of the earliest horror movies, I would say this is one of the most, um, uh, I wouldn't say influential, but I think it's just one of the best. Well, one of the things that, that struck me tonight is, you know, we give, or I guess, you know, as uh, uh, in filmdom has given credit to Psycho, right, in 1960 as being like one of the, the first psychological horror films where you deal with the broken psychology of its uh, character. And then there were, you know, all these copies made, yeah. uh, you know, subsequently. But like this is 1956, right? So we were already in this one dealing with, you know, someone with the, I mean, that whole thing of uh, Freudian interpretation of the psychology of a serial killer, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. The monster isn't, you know, the coming from out there. Now it's, uh, you know, in, in the family and how it affects like everyone who's like related to it or, you know, in the orbit of this character. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, you've seen other stuff more recently, like, uh, the Good Son. Um, the Good Son yeah. is basically the, the yeah. remake of Bad Seed. Was yeah. there, uh, did anybody see We Need to Talk About Kevin? No. Uh -oh. I was just looking that up the other day. I don't know why. Maybe it was subconsciously influenced by the Bad Seed, but um, yeah, that one is. Because uh, it's from the, I mean, like this, from the parental angle mm -hmm. of, yes. you know, a child who's exhibiting some kind of. Uh, you psychosis, know. or uh, not a psychosis, psychopathy. Of, or, yeah. Um, and I would say, I mean, I mean, the early, the the latest one that I would think even comes close to this, even though it's not, I mean, it's the not only, like the, no, the Babadook. <laughs> oh. Babadook. I, yeah, like no, the I first, was thinking about that The while first we're half this. of Babadook yeah. is about a mother dealing with her fucking, like, crazy kid, right? Yeah. And then you mm -hmm. have to learn the monster story or whatever. But uh, so this, this movie is about a little girl who I think, I mean, you want to talk about... A horror doesn't have a lot of females in their like roster of like you know right. good villains, right? I say Rhoda Penmark is up there, dude. <laughs> like, she's a fucking evil little girl, dude. She's so evil. <laughs> well, that's why it's like I guess that comes down to like the study of uh, psychopathy. We're saying right? <laughs> psychopathy. The, uh, psychopathy. I'm not coining that phrase. I think it's probably psychopathy. psychopathy. Um. But the idea that what makes someone evil to the rest of us evil. humans abnormal is psychology, the, we'll, uh, well the, the lack the lack of empathy, right? Mm. Which the psychotic or the, the psycho psychopath psychopath. There we go. Psycho, yeah, that's a word. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Right? <laughs> Exhibits. It's just hard for I think like other you know like uh, what we're saying like rational no just normally uh, normal adults to 
recognized i think in a lot of ways like that yeah. that certain people among you know your group or whatever you know of humanity are born without that kind of emotional response and know how to read your face <clears throat> and you know understand what you're think you're what you're feeling they don't know why because well, they're sociopath way, right but I they mean, can they, yes they, they can learn how it. to yeah they just they know to hide they have to, like dexter's like the, about this yeah. right yeah. yeah you find out exactly how to like hide amongst uh society because you can manipulate people if you don't like you have no stakes in the in the game aside yeah. from self-preservation and being able to do the things that you know that you're compelled to do yeah and i like how Beyond like that it's like you can just play a game with people wrote <laughs> All Rhoda goes to a, a kind of a finishing school, or it's more of a, I mean, it's a country I, it, school. it is her school, but it is more of a high, mm. high class, like finishing school, f- not necessarily the for fern girls. country day the school fern. or something like that, yeah. And, uh, you know, that kind of gives you an insight, like when she like first like curtsies in front of Mrs. Fern and like you can hear almost her like, uh. <laughs> Her, uh, just the tone in her voice is very condescending, you know, like, good evening, Mrs. Fur, you know, like, I mean, she's doing everything, like, precise, right? Yeah. Perfect curtsy, you know. Uh, this is how you're supposed to do it. Well, she's very charming, but I think that's also, they say, like, a a, a trait of psychopaths. Oh, yes, you know, definitely. They're, they're very charming. And- well, that's what I thought was very interesting from, uh, I mean, I've seen this movie a lot, uh, started reading uh, some of the book, I'm like 60 pages in or so, very boring. But uh, it's a book from the 50s. How long is the book? It's like 200 pages. Jesus. It should be it's really not, quick. It's not that long. But it's such a it's such an analytical read. Like there's no character. It's all very much like everybody's like whatever. I know like, it's not that long, but for this story, it shouldn't be that long. Well, like yeah. by this movie, could you tell? Oh, there's a uh, an apartment yes. manager that the Penmarks live with, named uh, Mrs. Monica. Breedlove, Monica Breedlove. Yeah. And she lives with her brother Emery. Now, watching this, could you tell Emery is a latent homosexual? No. His he lives with his sister. I didn't know they were living together. I didn't. I didn't yeah, they that. yeah they kind of just talk about. Well, I think she always he lived in about. the building when he right. was there. Yeah, but that's I, what I, I, I didn't know. know you didn't get that they live with each other. No, that no. They're when there's, there's that little there. bird, he's like. I mean, they're, they're showing. This is like what in 1956, how they could show how a fruity guy, you know, especially because he talks oh, about he being alone. Birds. It's like, why would a man in his in his 50s be alone <laughs> living with this? You know, this is their way of like the confirmed. Bachelor. I mean, the book, right. the, the yeah. book does tell you straight out, you know, like. Hey, yeah. this guy's got latent Page homosexual. Two. Well, he, Emery, in the, latent homosexual. In the book, 25. they even talk about how Monica <laughs> might even have some incestual. I mean, the book is a hundred per fucking cent, like a uh, psychological uh, examination of everybody, people. right? Mm. To the point where you can't even read it as a fun book. You're just uh, like, God damn, this is like a fucking textbook. Well, they bring some of that into well, the movie because there is like Monica has gone and she met Dr. Freud, Sigmund Freud yeah. at some point yeah. and was, uh, went to analysis and so has become a a self uh described analyzer at this point like, everything's just like a hobby a one or what yeah. you know it's like because she went to a psychiatrist right. now she, knows. Now she well, thinks that she, she can just thinks that this is the new people. world yeah. the yes. new world is we analyze every thought about each other and we try to put each other in the boxes that we whatever so like Everything she talks about has yes. to deal with analyzing in some weird way, shape, yeah, or form. Well, it's self help, right? It's like if you analyze, it worked for me. If right. you analyze yourself, you're going to uncover these things and be able to uh, eliminate some of your hang ups. That came from the 60s, right? The hang up. Well, that's <laughs> another weird thing about this movie. It doesn't focus a lot on it at all. At all. It's just in there that's weird, where it's a very positive thing that the uh, psychiatrist. Um, convinces her to leave her husband, right? It's right, very yeah. positive, like, woohoo, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's fucking, that's a little weird, you know? It's that whole, like, trying to get women away from men, you know? And well, she how, has like, self-awareness at that point of something that she was unaware of before, and once the door's been open, you can't go back and see it, you know, the same way mm-hmm. again. It's like, that's the danger. Well, the danger? The danger. That's, it is the I danger. I suppose it's, it's one of the things that you have to be prepared with if you go into some kind of psychoanalysis. Yeah, because right. I, I would actually... Your for you're just yeah. like, I can't see it the other way now. Well, because yeah. I would actually be afraid that it, it teaches you to... to Go off on a whim, right? Any thought you have on your head, like, oh, I want to leave my husband, you leave your husband. You're not, you know, you don't stick it out because, I mean, and then, I mean, shit, look where we've gone mm. 60 years from there where, I mean, people are married for, you know, mm. barely any time at all before they're like, oh, we got a problem. Yep. It's time to fucking. But with this, I like. We cannot overcome that. In this, I like how they 
they played down the whole psychoanalysis because the people that are really inter- involved with psychoanalysis, they're the ones that see the complete shell of this little girl. The mom who wants nothing to do with psychoanalysis, she's the one that like sees through her. The rest of them who go through and check all these boxes, like, I know, I can figure out who you are. They're the ones that are completely tricked by this little girl. Right. Yes. And that's yeah. just because, I mean, she's grown up around her. I like how she does, like, kind of placate her for the first bit. But then later, she's like, I know you're, you know, because she, I love that. Like, I have the prettiest mother, mm-hmm. yeah. the sweetest mother. <laughs> Dude, I love that. Yeah. Well, there's also that. Something I mean, kids do, though, because they know when they want to. They don't want to be in trouble. They're like, I, and they do. They'll hug you. They're like, I love you. And just like, don't do that. Well, I love how trouble. Rhoda will even it's like, creepy. if she knows it's getting away from what she yes. wants, she finds a way to bring it back up. You know, like when she's reading the story and then she like, um, like the mother starts kind of like reading off in the distance. I mean, we haven't really talked about the plot, but we'll get into it in a second. But she starts like kind of <laughs> like, like dazing off and, and Rhoda's kind of like, you know, she starts asking her a bunch of questions and then she like asks her about something she had just read and the, and the mom's like, Oh, you, you know, she gets back to it. Then Rhoda kind of like, she's satisfied in the fact that oh, I was able to loop her back to like what I wanted her to do, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. now I can like, so, well, the, the, the main plot of this movie, just to get it uh, through real quickly is uh, Rhoda goes to a picnic and she um, is very jealous of this boy named uh, Daigle. Um, anybody remember the first name of the Claude. kid? Chuck? Claude. 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 Claude Daigle. Claude. 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 Claude Daigle. And Claude. he won Claude. a penmanship medal. Claude. And uh, I like how she's like, it's mine. He knew it was mine. <laughs> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's when like, she really shows through, right? Like when she, But once again, it's like, is that just a child? I mean, is that just her acting as if, oh, like the way a normal child does? Right. Like throwing a temper tantrum over a, a pe- fucking penmanship medal? Yeah. But then, of course, uh, they get the news that the Dago boy drowned. The Dago boy drowned. That'd be nice if a uh, local news was like that. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. We like, interrupt this program to let you know that there's been a child who has died at a local park. Just a local Details picnic. to come. Right. And then like 30 Two seconds minutes. later, they have the whole story. Claude Dago, yeah. age eight, Claude was Dago. found. <laughs> yeah. Remarkably Bruises fast. on his uh, hands and face. <laughs> yes. and, yeah. But I, I do like how this movie, I mean, the way I think of this is a horror movie is, I mean, you are seeing a woman slowly realize her daughter. Yeah, that's the horror yes. of it. Definitely. You know, that's yeah. the... And considering the crowd it was made for, 1956, yeah, like you can, right, that's the horror. Because you didn't even need a body in a horror movie back no. in the day. You just needed intent to murder, and they're like, he means to murder you? <gasps> and then you, you know, run away from that or, for like 88 minutes, and that's yeah, a horror movie. this is like People a screaming. pretty fucking severe, you know, like, uh, yeah. topic to suggest yeah. that this angelic, what is she, eight? Then, yes. Yeah. Eight year old is a burgeoning Murder. serial killer and has already claimed, you know, that we find out one prior victim. Yes. And, you know, in the course of the movie, kills uh, at least two people and with the plans to kill a third. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know or I guess her fourth. But, uh, you know, um, what was I going to say? The, the, it, I like the way that it goes and actually does seem to show you how that, you know, that these people operate because the environment around them is set up to like, you just don't believe it. I suppose, you know, like the, the the whole time you're sitting there looking at the mother going like, okay, you have the, the penmanship award. She's that's missing from the corpse. Right. She has it in her possession. You know, it's like all the evidence points to this and she just can't like wrap her head around it. She's like, Rhoda, I want you to tell me what actually happened. Just tell me the truth. Yeah, she just thinks she stole the medal. Not right, that not right. that she killed the Dago right, boy, yeah. but like but she just she's like, you lie. And, that's and what helps almost, enable that, I guess. Because you just don't believe that a psychopath you know is a psycho. Right. Like a but, potential murderer. And it's almost believable the way she explains it. How right. she had chased the boy, promised she could wear it for an hour, he lied. She got it from him, like, before he died, and she happened to have it while he died, and then she just ended up keeping it at the house and everything. Like, her explanation for it is almost passable. Yeah. Did the movie at any point, like, give you that kind of, you know, I mean, what what films of this type generally do, where you have the, well, you know, is the kid a killer, or <laughs> is it just, you know, the kid just a victim of this type of circumstance? Was there ever any suspense? Or were you like, you know, well, we're watching a movie called The Bad Seed. It's just her acting. I mean, if you're knowledgeable, I mean, just 
uh, Patty McCormick. That is the yes. actress that played Little Rhoda. I'm trying to think of what audiences would think back in the day. Because yeah. you can almost, like, when you first hear that she wanted the medal and you see how upset she is about it, and then you hear on the radio that the boy who had the medal is dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At that point, you're just like, oh, because I yeah. think at that point, they're directly <laughs> pointing at at the girl. Especially when the teacher shows up and begins to yes. explain, mm -hmm. like, you know, here's where, you know, I mean, because... The teacher. But I like that scene a lot, though, because you think I, well, I like you it, think yeah. the teacher it be a cop, is but, accused. You know, a, yeah. but, right. but I like that when 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 uh, the mother uh, Christine Penmark when she's like, you think Rhoda, and as soon as her face drops, she's like, I never thought like that's why I was like, she doesn't think Rhoda. She she yeah. is expelling Rhoda just for her sore loser attitude about the pen uh, penmanship but medal. It's got to be because she's creepy. But she, like but she, she somehow is reading wrong to this teacher. Even yes, though, even but the conversation before at the picnic, yeah. the, the teacher's hesitant to yeah. give her, is she popular? Yeah, is she, yeah she, because, she because she's not doing anything <coughs> wrong, but she can tell there's something off. Well, yes. you, what yeah. we don't know that we learn in the book, if you read the book, what we don't know is Rhoda was kicked out of her, her previous school for being cold hearted and Makes that's sense. why they think, oh, if we put her in this higher end school, she'll excel more because she just needs to be that. But yeah, I like that point you're talking about. How yeah, they're like, is she popular? I'm like, oh, we'll get back to that. <laughs> oh my, what's that? Look at the time. Uh, I really have an appointment over here that I have to deal with. Yeah, yeah. I have to stop putting this hay on the table and go over here. Excelsior. Mm -hmm. Excelsior. Yeah, I guess it had to be. And I like how like Monica Breedlove is the character that supplies the the nurture over nature. Monica Breedlove is the everything is perfect. Road is so perfect, and here's glasses for you, and here's you know this is like you know people being overly um, mm. accepted uh, accepting of uh, Rhoda no matter even if she's oh, rude yes. very you overly. know she'll just be like oh, I appreciate a child that's forthcoming yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know like so that's where I'm like what are they I mean I mean I'm sure I, I, I mean I think it's there to give you kind of a balance of like is this uh, nature versus nurture because you could see how everybody's just like what a beautiful. Right. Little girl. And but the perfect. film brings in this subplot, which becomes like, you know, a major component of it, where the M Rhoda's mother uh, has always had what we come to know, learn is the changeling fantasy, mm -hmm. which is, you know, like, I am not actually, I'm not, you know, my parents aren't really my parents. I'm actually adopted. I'm from a, you know, royal birth or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's a fairly common uh, childhood fantasy. Mm -hmm. And so she just kind of, uh, it turns out that, you know, she has these memories and these dreams that she's had. And this ties into this, like, true crime investigative uh, story. Her father, her, father, her, father, her father was a uh, criminal investigator. But after specifically, the law or he, he, he investigated one uh, serial killer. Bessie a woman. Dankert? <laughs> Bessie Dankert. I don't know. I think that it's sounds Bessie right. Dankert, yeah. Who poisoned like what nine people or something? Yeah, like in the book, in the book, she she kills like like her her two nieces that are like two years old. That's uh, how like how yeah. fucking like I mean that book is pretty like holy fuck, dude. You know this is this yeah. is pretty nuts. Well, so I mean, this movie's like old people. Well, old going people. back to that, they're point, useless. Really quickly, like just you know because of this has like such a heavy uh, you know a theme, I guess for 1956. This, the studio makes all of these concessions to kind of take the edge off of it. At the very end of the movie, they trot out the entire cast, kind of like you would at a play. Mm. Yeah. And uh, you get to see the lead actress, like, fake spanking the little girl that's actress. Fun, right. You know, because laughing. I think that's, you're trying but, to say, like, you know, look, she's being punished for, you know. Because, uh, well, I mean, in 1950, I mean, how many little children did they kill in movie? <laughs> I mean, yeah. we'll get to that in the end. But yeah, still, like, like too, everything right? at the end is, like, to make up for, like, Everything yeah, else you saw, you know, they're like, <laughs> don't, you know, don't, don't. Yeah, it's pretty Keep heavy, going to Warner Brothers pictures. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, her father, Richard Bravo. Richard Bravo. Bravo. Which is, he's dead in the book. Dick Bravo. That's why I'm, like, really interested in, fin that's the almost, the, one of the only reasons, like, I gotta finish this book, because it's like, what is the role? Like, how does she well, find out? That's what I was going to ask you, but again, you didn't finish the book. Like, how did she find it. out? How does she find out? Because, oh, this yeah, isn't the, not Rhoda's father. You're saying uh, uh, Christine's Christine father. Christine Penmark, Richard right. Bravo, the, the, the crime writer. Yeah. 
So, because we find out that she was a changeling. She was a changeling. Yes. He was investigating this like ruthless murderer, and uh, some somehow Christine was left behind, or somehow she got away, or as an infant. Yeah, and uh, he found her, and that's a really sweet scene. I love that scene. So the idea. I don't being... remember much, and then she begins to describe in detail a very specific <laughs> yeah. scene. For a two-year-old, that's impressive, yeah. too. She climbed out the window and hid in the, you know, I whatever. climbed through the reeds, and then I looked out through the bush, and there was my mother, and she was calling my name. There was moonlight out. And, yeah. like, <laughs> like, give me little pauses to, and like... And the name she claimed was... A- Decker! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, like, Ingo. Ingo Denker. Ingo, yeah, Ingo. Ingo. I was like, yeah. what? Is that, was that a popular oh, name like, back right. in the like, day, Ingo? Ingo? Maybe like, it's, like, Ingo? Polish or something. What was we just the, don't know. Uh, the dead like, boy's like, mother's Patty? name? Patty? Oh no! Uh, you, uh, God damn it, Eustace? Was it Eustace? No. Hortense. 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 Yeah. Hort- Hortense. Is that a popular Hortense. name back then? I fucking love. Oh, like, I gotta tell you, dude, that is like really when I first saw this movie. I mean, that's what stands out is that actress playing Hortense. Hortense. Uh, Dangle. I got drunk and came over. I'm sorry. I got that's drunk. okay. I'm over, I'm over. <laughs> But, oh, my God, dude, like, I've never been... That is one of those, you can laugh and completely cry at that scene. Mm-hmm. Like, it is... Like, the more you watch this movie, you'll see the humor, and then you'll see the sadness. Like, I used to only laugh at it until I've swat... And now I only cry at that scene, because it's so fucking sad. Even though it's comedy, she's fucking drunk off her ass. Right. But, you know, she's still like, where's your little girl? You know, I just want to ask her, well, what do you think? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> she's funny, the last one it's, it's, on it's my like, side. it's so tense. For, like, the 50s, I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, this is so stressful. Like, mm-hmm. I, I was really like they feeling have the, to deal the with it. Yeah, like today's yeah. today's movie TV universe, all dramas over secrets. Where mm-hmm. this is like, no, it's about the drama is about people just like knocking on the fucking right, door, an being problem like, that is just presenting itself. Yeah, like, they're not like, straight out saying I think Rhoda killed my boy, but they're just like they say he's the last one, you know? Right, <laughs> last one I saw. <laughs> he little I, bill thing. I'm not saying anything, but I just I question. love the hoseman. Or tense. Please. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> yeah. He's from oh. shit. Oh, I know a lot of... I know, yeah. So like is, glasses, walking around, talking a lot quicker. Oh, yeah, so the is the, uh, the, I was looking at, the like, father, the yeah, colonel. Yeah, all, all the guys were familiar. Yeah. Like the doctor, the brother. But I'm like, this is because yeah. I've seen this movie before. I, I know uh, <laughs> Patty McCormick uh, Ra- wrote uh, herself. She was in a episode of... Mm, damn it, I'm going to lose it. It's either Outer Limits or like Chiller Theater. Diagnosis like Murder. Uh, yeah, she went on to have like a series on something. Oh, yeah, yeah? But I'm not sure if it was like How Big Was My Valley or, you know, something she was yeah. on subsequently that you know how big was the valley <laughs> <laughs> um it was huge but i guess the movie is with this this um the introduction of the you know, the confirmation i guess that uh christine was adopted and so therefore rhoda has inherited uh this the serial right. killer gene right. the serial from killer her mother. Gene. Yes. this is yeah. how dangerous this movie is in a weird way right like, but that's what it's advocating right? it is it's because av- all the characters but in the movie it fixes it at the end but i don't know if that's the, once again once i get done reading the book I, i'll know whether is this the author's like conclusion mm. or is this the film industry that's like oh, we don't want people thinking that like bad people right. like uh, have bad offspring even though i think they're actually well you have two i think that they're supposed to be like the the uh, well, I mean, they're not like the, the the representatives of clinical psychology. I guess they are, right? There's That's what Tasker, the guy does. Tasker, Reginald Tasker, yeah. who's a, a friend of like Monica Breed loves. Yeah, but he's a writer. Like a, he's like he's a, a, a kind of a crime writer. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or investigator or some type. Something of like that. Because she's always talking something. like the blood and go, like oh his, yeah. his his buckets of blood and right. and whatever. But he proposes the idea that uh, possibly like. Uh, these type of traits can be passed on genetically, but I believe her father, who was a true crime writer, and the met the doctor in at the end. Yeah, right. They yeah. they basically said, "Oh, that's all." Yeah, they're the opposing. They're like, oh, they call it. I can't else. say it. he calls it troll. Troll whip. <laughs> right, I don't know what that. That's a bunch of hog trollops. No, I don't know. What, of, what was it? Hog trollops. Hog trollops. It's something like that. There was another great phrase. Uh, I'm, I'd be a Milwaukee mongoloid and oh, yeah, like a mongoloid. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like what? I like I that, that one down. That's a great. I like it. She thinks she can't melt butter. She's so cool. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leroy, we're gonna talk about Leroy. Well, we will. Yeah. But I guess that's what uh, you know. The, the idea that then the movie is presenting is that the, this is clearly, even though like the the guys who 
are advocating like you know no this is the hogwash yeah. that you know they're the ignorant society right they're like we're not ready to believe that sciencey stuff you yeah, know yeah, that's yeah. what right. they are <laughs> An yeah. advancement of some sort. But I love the, like, I I mean, shit, it even still breaks my heart when uh, when the the grandfather, the uh, uh, Christine's uh, father, the crime uh-huh. writer, when he looks at Rhoda because she's talking about how, like, could it have passed? Could it, you know, because, you know, it actually comes out. Uh, she brings that, me- the her past memories up to her father right. and he kind of reveals it all, which I love that fucking scene where he's like, you were the best thing. I just love that. He's like, first this, like, really, like, proud father then he's almost this desperate guy, like, don't fucking hate me because I lied to you and you're really not blood related to me. Like, this is probably one of the only times in a movie where, like, just by the actor walking in, oh, I feel the blood relation. And then by the end of that scene, I was like, holy fuck, you know, this person is not related to this person at all. He's still like, don't, like, not love me as a father. You know, I love you as a daughter. Don't. And I love when he, he looks at Rhoda in the face, then he turns to Christine and he does that little shake, like, no. Nah. That's a good oh, moment. Oh, it's a fucking yeah. good moment, moment dude. Ah, yeah. oh, so sweet, this movie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think any other horror movie makes me fucking, like, tear up as much as this movie. It's too great. Well, too great. <laughs> since you brought him up, Leroy. Leroy. Leroy? Leroy. I saw Leroy. you follow that little boy to the... <laughs> so he's identified, he's the the building uh, janitor, for lack yes. of a better word, and he's... He, he's... Uh, what's her name? Martha, Mary, um, Aunt Martha, uh, May Marlene. What's her name? Monica. Breedlove. Monica, Monica Breedlove. Uh, says that basically he has the intelligence of an eight year old himself. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so he's supposed to be like, you know, kind of a dim witted guy, but at no point in the movie, by the performance that I buy, that he was dim witted. He was just as kind of a. You know, lower class. Just child, I mean, he's not, this, but childish in a way. Like he gets into arguments, teases. He's um, is petty about the things uh, when he washes her shoes as she's walking out. Like he's childlike, but not like intelligent level down to yeah. an eight year old. Mm-hmm. But he has mm-hmm. childlike qualities. He he is the psyche that is supposed to best relate to Rhoda's. Yeah, yeah. he is like you know I like that. He's like that little Rhoda. She's smart. Almost as smart as me. (laughs) (laughs) But he sees her, like, from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, okay, so maybe this is uh, one... But uh, she talks to him, like, fluently. Like, she doesn't care. Like, if she's not around her mother or, like, Monica or something, like, she doesn't care about being... I love that, like, what do I care? It was... It was a... Claude Dougal that drowned, not me or whatever yeah, the fuck. Right. It's so she like, skates oh my away. God, dude. It's like, yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah, she it's talks cold. to him like, uh, well, I don't know, not like an equal, but she covers for their conversation at one point where it was like she could manipulate this situation because mom comes in and sees the older, you know, uh, gardener or whatever talking to the little eight year old girl. Like, mm. why are you talking to her? Don't be talking to her. And she comes out and says, like, I started it, mother. You know, but they ju- had just had a conversation where basically he's accusing her almost of murder. You know, it's like, I see you. It's like, because I'm like you. I understand you. Like, he sees through her. Look at yeah. the blood hound. And when they put that, that little, that stick's going to turn blue like a little, like a little Rob's there. <laughs> that fucking yeah. I think, I think she likes having the confidant. You think? I think so. Because this is where I was like, the movie either, the story either so had an opportunity there. Really? Where... I guess one of the the uh, the issues that I had with the movie, uh, the first one, was uh, where it felt disingenuous, was that Leroy's character this whole time has been like basically on the ball. Uh, you know, he's got her dead to rights. Yeah, he sees what she's doing and is just kind of like, you know. Because he's over explaining how he knows it, right? It's like, I know you did this. I know you killed that little boy. And I know you did it with this and this and this. Where it's like, okay, so either he is trying to gain favor with her where he can say, you know, you know, we're going to have this kind of confidential relationship. It's like, what does he get out of it? He's just teasing her. At some he point, doesn't know any of this. Well, I know shit. that's where it goes, mm-hmm. but it feels the whole time because he's so on the ball and yeah. so persistent about it. When it turns out that like, Oh my God, I was just teasing you and I didn't actually think that you killed that boy. But now, by your answer, I believe that you killed that boy. And then he's freaked out. I told that, you I got anybody oh, shoes. That <laughs> didn't feel, that didn't ring as like genuine. It's no. like, it seemed if he'd like. stuck with the, he's got it and actually thinks she did it. Because this but is I the like- moment, it seemed like that was the moment in, a, in the story where basically 
because he has her over a barrel. Yeah. Only in that, like, he can't go to the mom, because who would believe him? He can't really go to the cops until he has, like, some evidence. So it's like, I know this about you, which you have to, you know, assume. Like, the viewer sits there assuming that, like, well, she's going to fucking kill him. Yeah. So mm-hmm. this is the point where he should be making demands. This is what I want out off of you, and I will keep the... But he the, doesn't uh, know anything <clears throat> until she freaks out about the shoes. But this is the way... That's it, the I guess only I'm saying thing, that's the way it plays. Because he, all he, he knew it. But all he know? does is say what the radio says. The boy was found on the war, right? But even he comes up with the shoe thing. No, he says yeah, stick. He's pretty, no, he but says, he changes... The be, last because she says the something shoes. about the shoes. Right, but he changes to it, even though he's... Right after that, he says he was just joking. Like, he's still joking when he brings up the shoes. He just happens to be right on the money. Yeah. Because right after that, he's just like, I was just joking. I didn't think you did it. And, but he had it right there. I guess well, they just had a problem she, like, believing asks that, it him was, about, that, he, that he was that close on the mark where he, where he didn't actually mean it. Because he's right. like, maybe it wasn't a stick, but maybe it was, like, whatever. And he basically gets to the point where, you know, he gets her to... Co- to uh, Admit that she tried to burn some shoes. Give them back. Give them. Back. I love her. God, yeah, she's so evil, dude. Yeah, <laughs> but you're right. It's like, <laughs> hey, we can. I, you can tell me, and you know, kind of like a Dexter well, he doesn't situation ever back can down. happen there. It's like because he says, like, you know, because he's a mean dude, right? That, right. You know, you, he, he knows I know she's you're mean, mean because yeah. I'm mean, and I'm I've mean done too. stuff too. You know, yeah. but you don't know that he's killed people or what he's really talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's just probably. I mean, he might be a pervert. He might be something. Who knows, right? Yeah. Or it just could be. I mean, I think the whole idea behind his character is the fact that. He's hiding in society to Monica Breedlove the same way Rhoda's hiding in society, right? He's able to keep up his, like, just lawn duty work or whatever, his managerial. But he's like, they don't know how smart I am, you know, that sort of fucking thing, so right? Brings up I a sleep point. in the like, basement. Is, uh, in the book, is he a pervert? No, but now like, that you said that, there's an opportunity that Reginald you Tasker, that. the crime writer, how yeah. he's like, he mentions that weird little thing about the girl. I was like, that was very pervy. That so was creepy. I wonder, like, I haven't. Reginald Tasker, when yeah. we first introduced the crime writer and yeah. he introduces Rhoda, and he's like, oh, those pretty, like, you know. He's like, you're going to make a man very happy. Someday. Yeah, like, he's it's just really like, creepy. that beautiful. Uh, but, yeah. Even though I love that scene where he, like, pulls her, <laughs> her pigtail out in the front, and then she, like, walks past the front door, and then she, back. like, corrects it. <laughs> That's fucking genius, dude, because it just shows how she'll let people, like, do whatever, but then she's like, fuck you, you know? Yeah, I still yeah, got my yeah, own yeah. thing. There's but some I, creepy moments in that regard. Yeah. It's like everybody's a little too close to each other. But I this. think that's yeah. the point of this movie. The point is everybody has a psychological evil in them. Yeah. Everybody, whether mm-hmm. it be pedophilia, whether it be incest, whether it be homosexuality, whether it be murder, whether, you know, everybody has something in them. More so in the book, of course, than in this. But you do see it. Yeah, yeah you see it. It's not, like, not there, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, I think with Leroy and and um, Leroy, yeah, Leroy, Bruce Leroy. What, <laughs> I think how I does think he say that? Like I saw you follow Leroy. that little boy on the wall. Oh, God, yeah, I, I think he's. I think he's her. I think he's like the mirror of oh. her. Yeah, because she's she's this eight year old who's committing these very adult crimes, and he's an adult who's actually got this eight year old mindset. So I think right. his evil, his crimes, I think are probably just the little petty things like spraying her shoes. Well, he probably you know, he's he's not like the secret. I don't think he has. Well, any, he like, probably thinks sins. hers are just as just as bad as his. Exactly. Right? He thinks they're little bullshit. Things, yeah, exactly. You know, like he once again, he probably just thinks maybe she stole the pendant and not I, even. Yeah, you know. I, I don't right. think he's done anything beyond like secret little piddly shit that a. A maintenance man can do right, you know, but like, maybe thinks like, they're a big deal, like creep like, through someone's stuff or something. I don't think he's done. It's anything just nice because he's that. the he's the only character that can just come out and talk to her about what's going on. Because yeah. the mother doesn't want to realize it. You know, she keeps making excuses even yeah. in her own mind for like why her daughter would do this or or how it would seem. But he's at least a character that can be like, I believe you did it. Yeah. But the mother actually does come around, which, you know, or becomes aware of this. And then the movie takes on like a new because dynamic. Because Leroy dies. 
Like, that's the first time she saw... I mean, she gets him to, like, admit well, no, it before that, when she's going to throw the shoes away. The dynamic shifts before that, though. Yeah. Well, it's because when she's going to go... When she's going to incinerate the shoes, that's when she knows, like, you're getting rid of fucking Evan. Oh, right. So, like, yeah. you tell me yeah. what happened, but she still tries to make it seem like I can't help who I am, right? Like, oh, I told him it was mine. I told him, like, what would happen, it's like, you I, know? It wasn't my fault. I warned him. It wasn't my fault. I told, I told him. him, you know? And she's only crying because she wants her mom to see like some sympathy yeah. right it's not yeah. even like a real can't you see I had no choice but I love that the struggle between the mother like I mean in a weird way it's like oh my god is this like a pro abortion movie too because I mean this mother just to be like do I take care of this before anybody else does you know euthanasia or whatever yeah like. Well, I guess that's a, yeah. Are you res- if the kid is yours? Are you responsible? Well, I mean, it kind of it puts that moral dilemma up, right? I mean, I guess that's what For becomes sure. interesting. That's why I said the dynamic shifts because the mother, like the kid, she's got the kid dead to rights, right? As far as I have evidence and I can see through you, I know you, I know you're acting. I can see the mask that you're putting on to make you, you know. So don't bullshit me. Tell me what happened, and you know. The psycho is sitting there going like, well, I can tell her. And then like, I don't know what would happen because she does. Mom does actually. The first thing is like, I've got to call the teacher. If that call would have went through, it turns out the teacher wasn't there. And that saves that whole, uh, you know, side of the story from happening. So then mom is like, okay, I can't get hold of the teacher. So I just need to sit and think about it. And the thing that she comes up with is, like, we need to burn these shoes. It's like, so she does go out and dump the pendant. And so she is covering for and becoming yep. an accomplice to an accessory mm-hmm. and to totally murder. Insane. To, well, because she has, uh, she's a moral character, right? Mm-hmm. She's having the, the problem that the psychopath doesn't have. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Almost violently at certain points. Just, yeah. just slamming her fists on the table. Yeah, that's just that, how to show a 1950s, like, Mom, fucking just, freaking out! Uh, right? uh, she just ugh. she loves her daughter. She gave birth to the daughter, raised yeah. the daughter. Mm-hmm. She doesn't want to. I mean, I guess part of it she believes it, but she's like resigned to it. And I suppose naively, she just believes that if we can take care of this particular thing, it'll yeah. go away. Yeah, because she's hoping like <laughs> maybe this is one time, or, right? You yeah, know, because yeah, she yeah. even asks her her whatever her crime writer guy like, is there any hope? Like, oh no, once they murder, you know. Oh, Did you? There was a the reason that I guess this kind of stuff like interests me. I saw an article uh, not too long, a couple of years ago. There was a neuroscientist named James Fallon, and he was doing a study on psychopathic. Uh, he had like a, a bunch of uh, brain scans of psychopaths. Mm-hmm. He was trying to mm-hmm. do like a study on it, but he was also doing a study on Alzheimer's patients at the same time, and had gotten brain scans of everyone in his family and so once he (laughs) identified the portion of the brain in the scan that wasn't lighting up to you know show uh the empathy center Mm -hmm. basically like Mm -hmm. this is a clearly psychopathic brain he found one in the stack of his own family Family. yeah i remember that and it turns out it was his (laughs) yeah (laughs) so instead of actually like retreating into uh you know obscurity He actually went public kind of with this discovery. It's like, so I am a psychopath. And then it like starts to explain like a lot of his behavior. So now he's like, you know, so he's like a nonviolent psychopath. He's got things that he does and, you know, to, uh, to you know, walk a certain to masturbate constantly. I mean, I know well, there's gotta be another, <laughs> another element that is not present in which he would like, you know, kill people or try to satisfy whatever need that right. is. He doesn't have the need doesn't to kill people, that, right. but he still sees people as playthings. I guess in a way that he wasn't aware of before to the point where he was saying like, you know, I read like these uh, interviews with him where he would say, you know, like uh, when in talking to his wife, there's things that he can say to her to make her feel better. You know, it's like, well, do you care that she feels better about something? He's like, no, not really. But, I mean, it makes my life easier, and she yeah. likes hearing it. And it was just, like, really cold. Yeah. The well, that's that just you, a, I mean, well, but a I'm sociopath, sure. right? That's just right. A, and if you look at, like, high high uh, operating business CEOs and stuff like that, like, the yeah. people who get to high levels of, of that achievement, and if you I'm, look at them, I'm sure they've done tests and everything, that, like, they're having those same things in their brain. Yeah. Like, those pieces that are not there that allow them to be able to do that to people and just not give yeah, a shit. Yeah, people are playthings. Oh, yeah. There's it, somehow subhuman, because 
people are basically there for your own satisfaction or, uh, you know. Well, because uh, if they didn't get to where you are, they're not as good as you. Right. That's, what, that's the thinking. It, if they right. didn't succeed to the point you have, you're obviously better yeah. than that. And yeah. you can play this and they buy it. This is why you know? eugenics, yeah. I fear eugenics. I mean, this is the worst thing humanity ever came up with. If, if evolution is supposed to be a natural process, human fallibility mixing in with fucking evolution is horrible, right? Because we're just going to pick what we think what we consider to be uh, either beautiful or intelligent or you know blah 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 there's blah, this blah. movie called gattaca yeah, uh, yeah. Gattaca. <laughs> uh but I mean, in this movie and again i don't know if i'd ever heard this before but maybe it's a scientific theory that that the psychopathic brain is perhaps a uh you know a predecessor to the modern evolved human brain like you know, when we were, you know, apes running around, like, you know, you may have actually had to use this type of uh, of lack of empathy response in order to, you know, succeed. To, you know, mm. that would be the survival of the fittest. Yeah. Yeah. But well, it's been evolved out because as society grows and things become more complicated. It makes you, you, much, yeah. it makes you wonder it. if it's made him a better scientist. Because he, oh, sure he sees people as research projects basically Mm -hmm. i wonder if that's helped him become a better scientist i think he's written books and stuff i mean it's just it's the whole the psychology of the psychopath is kind of interesting and because of that it's like giving me insight into you know watching the bad seed where it's like holy crap they're pretty much using this (laughs) exact i mean this is like a pretty good um you know, oh, look at the Nutty Professor, dude. All movies were about eugenics back in the fifties. It's it's like really creepy to think, actually, how everybody wanted to like just take humanity and you know just basically try to make fucking spreadsheets and goddamn statistics out of being a human and like picking what's the best. I mean, that's <laughs> scary shit, dude. And uh, we'll yeah. keep going back to it. We're still doing it. We you know always. Scurry. I, I kind of imagine it makes them better workers because they don't have to worry about yeah. that that whole part of like how how people feel about them or how they make mm-hmm. people feel or what they do to them. They can just forget all that mm-hmm. and do work. Mm-hmm. So that's like a whole part of most people's everyday lives where they can just ignore it and focus on other things. Yeah, it's got to. It makes sense. <clears throat> so. Yeah. No. So yeah. <laughs> so we're all not psychopaths because we're sitting in a basement doing a podcast. <laughs> Good job, guys. So it resolves itself. <laughs> the resolution of the film. Because we have to talk about the actual, the ending, the way that uh, it was apparently originally in the novel and in the... Yeah, I don't know how it ends in the novel. I haven't finished the novel. You All guys right. are going to ruin it. I'm going to ruin it. Well, I mean... Mother... <laughs> it's, it's basically... I just read 60 pages of that shit. <laughs> well, well, in the end, the... Uh, so she The does... journey, not the destination. Travis. Bullshit. The girl actually <laughs> does uh, target Leroy and kills him, right? Mm-hmm. Which is drives the mom kind of to have a nervous breakdown because she saw it coming. And did nothing. <laughs> and this is the and movie we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, because of this, she um, takes it, you know, it's like, this is my responsibility. I gave <laughs> birth to the girl, so I'm going to feed her an overdose of sleeping pills. Which is so sad, right? Because it's like, Foreshadowed yeah. by Monica and right, yeah. like I've got these vitamin really or these like sleeping like pills. Vitamins. Yeah. Clearly it is able fucking. Yeah, you'll never dude. confuse the two. And then as soon as you see like Rhoda <laughs> laying down on the couch, you're like, oh fuck, dude. You're like you know what yeah. she's gonna do. I thought the dude. mom was gonna do it and just leave everything behind. Like I didn't know she was gonna do it to the kid. Oh yeah, and I thought she was gonna take it. Oh no shit, like, dude. Well, now she's she, killing her kid. When, <laughs> when Monica, kid. when Monica first brought her the pills, I thought she was gonna do it, and oh, then no. when she was reading to her, I'm like, no, she's gonna she's give them to the kid. Mm-hmm. Don't try. I, I like the idea you... that if you introduce a gun in the first act, it yep. has to be used in the third, and all they do is talk about it, like, yep. oh, Ken, you know, Ken. I don't even like, like the I'm revolver s- he keeps in the bedroom. Yeah, the... <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. That's what's most frightening about it. Is like it's scary enough when she feeds her daughters the sleeping pill, and I love how like she looks away as she. She's taking it. It's yeah. so sad, dude. Well, she has a moral responsibility to deal with yeah. it. She has yeah. to do it, or yeah. this girl's going to kill more people, or whatever. Right. And then I love, like, her fucking little, like, monologue about how, like, you came from me and I'll always love you. Oh, it's like, I won't let yeah. them hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> you, I can just imagine That's really the stories scene. about the mothers who kill their children today looking down at their kids and saying the same things to them. 
before they, you know, drive the car into yeah, the Yeah, but, but usually the mothers are crazy, not the kids. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, right, but like but the same argument case, can almost be go either way. Case, that would be creepy, actually. I'm going to make that movie. The bad scene, but it's the opposite where she's like, she's evil. And it's yeah. just like the crazy mom that I have to put her in my trunk and drown her. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, but in this case, <laughs> as, as the movie went on, she did start to lose her shit. Like, yeah. she started to go crazy. Well, that's yeah. so eventually when, you know, the aftermath, you can look at her and say, like, was she you know, did this, she poisoned her daughter because she went crazy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it takes right. blame off of the kid, I guess for a narrative uh, perspective. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she poisons, she gives the kid an overdose and then shoots herself. Yeah, and it which, surprised me. That's I, a which, fucking, I like, didn't see coming. That's a jumped. shocking ending, dude. Like, like what? Whoa. She puts her daughter in one room, then goes to her room, and you just hear like her open the drawer, then the bang. It's like that's I, fucking filmmaking. Because I thought she was gonna take the pills. Because yeah, she said she was gonna take them as well. Yeah, I, I was have like, to I have to take, take them, them also. And I thought she was gonna go <laughs> into the room, take them, and that'd be it. I she wasn't said, expecting gonna, the gunshot. She said, "I'm gonna sleep." Also, yeah, she just says sleep. Yeah. yeah, she like alludes to it. Yeah. yeah, but it's still yeah, it's frightening. Like that startles you when you hear the. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my god. Which well, the we, movie could end there, really. Well, well, yeah. we cut to, well I think it has... Okay, so the, the... No, it ends with her skipping into frame and then freeze frame and slow push in on the <laughs> yeah. creepy-looking child. Well, this is how it should have ended and how the the book ends with the, the subsequent scene in the doctor's yeah. office, I believe, where Which we Which every out, movie in the 50s ended was in yeah. doctor's offices. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it weird? Psycho, mother... everybody, like, well, you see, this thing was going on <laughs> yes. where... This is the explanation for the aberrant behavior. Uh, so the mother, ha- in the book, the mother has died. Yeah. And we find out, you know, through, through clever screenwriting, they're referring to her. Is she going to be okay or whatever? Yeah. I think it turns out that be- the neighbors heard the gunshot, came over, found Rhoda, had her stomach pumped, and she survived. Now no one knows that she was a serial killer, so she's free now to do this again. Yeah. The movie changes that ending, and... This is, I think, was the second real problem that I had with the movie because it feels like the ending just kind of goes on and on and on and past its logical uh, ending point. Where yeah. it's like, if you would end it right there with her skipping into frame, yeah. like, but at least we have Rhoda and travel a lot of what a setup. And you could see it, and it's it's almost set up so that you're giving the audience time to the 1956 audience time to gasp. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you <laughs> still have Rhoda. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. It's set up that way. Which yeah. Yeah. Get, the first time I ever saw it got on. me. Dude. Like, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Cut. Cut to black. But no. They had they had morality laws back in the day. Like if you committed murder, you have to die. Yeah. Like you cannot yeah. survive. So crime they had to like cannot pay. Yeah. In, a, in a movie by the production code, you can't get away with crime. Right. So they had to fucking have lightning uh, hit Rhoda. Yeah, God, it was an act of God. Of, yeah. God I kills she's the bad her, seed. She checks to see if her dad is sleeping. Gets her slicker stuff on. I'm like, oh, she's going to the hospital to finish the job, and just kill yeah. her mother. But no, she goes to look for the metal on the dock. Well, she's happy her mom's dead. She's the one person that can link her. That's what's so evil about this movie, dude. Yeah. Like, I know it. Like, she don't give a fuck her mom's mm-hmm. dying, And then just a dude. random lightning strike blows up the dock and kills her. Yeah. yeah. What'd you think of that ending? It was the end. I was, I was, I was like, what? <laughs> Why? It's so random. It's so random. It's a little random. <laughs> but you still random. have your, you know, all you need is the Rhoda survive. <coughs> You're good to go. That's your idea. Well, and mom also survives in this one. She makes a phone call Don't to Don't you husband. wish it's she like, was married to you? Like, she's just like, I love, I love you. I love you. It's like, I want to like, marry damn. a woman like this that just loves you. That just fucking like, oh, Kenneth. I almost feel like Kenneth. <laughs> Kenneth is just like, don't talk now. We'll talk about it later. And he's just like, we're getting divorced. <laughs> just don't talk about you it. You tried to kill our daughter. He tried to kill our daughter. Bad scene too, where Kenneth comes home to find out his fucking wife tried to kill his daughter yeah. in the suicide. That's another horror you story. Almost, You're like, what the fuck is, almost, who is this person? You can almost make that movie today, The Bad Seed, but start it out in the aftermath of this movie. The dad and his daughter, and he thinks everything's fine. Yeah, and she kills more, and she yeah. doesn't, and she does more, and then the he's got to look back into night. what happened to his wife <laughs> and people before, and then he learns oh what actually happened. God. That's the movie you make today. Start out with the dad and the daughter. I'm writing this tomorrow. Would you the be surprised to know that they did remake the Bad Seed for they television did. in the eighties? <laughs> really? The 80s. They did. There's an eighties. Wasn't looked at too well, from what I hear. 
Yeah, I can't remember who was in it. I just saw a listing (laughs) that there was another bad TV. Interesting. I mean, yeah, the other bad scene is called The Good Son, but... No. Yeah. So in that one, though, I mean, it's basically Macaulay Culkin is a he's a psychopath. And well, you have a good with, kid to replace the bad kid. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's basically the good son. Is like, oh, well, we killed my psycho Macaulay Culkin, but Elijah Wood will now be our new son. That's what they should call it, the new son. <laughs> yeah. So I don't remember much about that movie. Like what the I love that. I, was, I love that movie too. It yeah. just seems like well, I mean, that's a wrap up thing. Uh, my parents made me close my eyes at the end when they're hanging off the cliff. Really? Like, can't look. I was very young. When did it come out? 93. Early I don't know. 90s, yeah. It was early. Yeah, it was like, get, don't look so at this part. Can we get a Captain Google on that? Good son? It doesn't matter. Well, but, I mean, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I don't know. Is that, are we, uh, are we ready for mail I mean, bags? the lightning struck. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Which cheapens another way. Okay. Well, but you know, they, you know. They had to, they had to do it. Ninety three was the good son. Yeah, you know, you know where the real ending of it is. Yeah, well, in hindsight, Little I think. Rhoda. But I think that always did kind of leave me, you know, uh, or rub me the wrong way. But when it got to there, it was like the movie's doing pretty well. And then, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so we're gonna summon our male demon right now, and his name is Igor. Igor, where are you, sir? Igor. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. All right, so Igor has brought us the mail. The way that you can contact us, if you want to, dear listeners, you can get a hold of us on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show or on Twitter, we're at Sat Freak Show or the old fashioned way. Call us. Horse yeah, and buggy call. 1-800-965-FREAK. Or the Pony <laughs> Freak. Yeah. Uh, Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com is the email. Oh. And so this week, Pamela Johnson writes in and says, This movie was disturbing. It took me a while to get over it. She says about mm-hmm. the bad seed. Well, I mean, I can definitely. Oh, uh, yeah. It's still to this day like, oh, God, I can't like, I can't put myself in, in Christine Penmark's shoes, man. Christine Kills children. me. It's creepy. I want to kill her. Kill the kid. Perfect little children to kill people. All right. So next up, we're going to do our uh, wrap-ups or go around the table, and everybody will tell you what we thought of the movie, our final review. And after that, stay tuned, listeners, because we're going to find out what Travis's favorite 10 horror movies of all time are after we hear from Lurk, our butler. Lurk. The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Lurk. Thank you, Lurk. Thank you. I think Lurk might be a bad seed. All right. Oh, shit. <laughs> Shh. Quiet. <laughs> there you go. All right, so I'm in the hot spot tonight, so I'm up first with my wrap-up. Colin. Uh, and this is Colin. Thank you very much. What did you think of this movie? <laughs> uh, Colleen. I'm glad that you've asked me that, Sean. Um, I... Uh, really liked this movie uh it seems like i don't know it seems in some way that like movies were more intelligent (laughs) back in the days when you couldn't rely i know i sound like a completely like an old guy now right like when you couldn't rely on uh, special effects you know when you actually had to have plot and character you know i mean it clips along there's a lot of right yeah yeah, but I mean, now it's like it also kind of the downside to it, you know, uh, trying to, I guess, do something like this for a modern audience is like now it is covering a a certain psychological uh, ground that has been covered, you know, in because now you've got daytime talk shows and yeah, like all man. these other, you know, air avenues and 60 minutes profiles and, you know where they have actually gone further in depth now with, you know, whatever the uh, 40 years of uh, advancement that we've had on, or it's more than 40 years. Sorry. It's like, uh, it's forever. Yeah. It's just forever. Advancement on, you know, the, the science of uh, psychology. So, you know, some of it, I guess now would play maybe to a modern viewer as like, you know, like you'd be ahead of the movie. Is there such thing as psychology anymore? They just give you a pill. (laughs) I don't think there is anything (laughs) in psychology. Oh, there's enough. It's uh, psychopharmacology now. Yeah, there you go, right? 
Um, but the, uh, the I think it's a, it's a really, probably, you know, this is indicative of the fact that the novel was such a hit, the play was such a hit. It's like, it's a really sharply written, well-characterized, I mean, like, each of the characters in this, uh, in this story are very well-defined and, I think, psychologically grounded, you know, in one way or another. Um, it's tense. It's awkward in ways that, you know, it's supposed to make you feel tense and awkward. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think just because of the subject matter, uh, you know, the eight-year cherubic eight-year-old girl being a, uh, a serial killer, just mm-hmm. an evil, heartless, cold, stone-cold, you know, murderer. Um, well-acted. I think it's well-directed. I mean, it uh, to me, it holds up. I think, yeah, you have to see this movie if you're a uh, self-avowed horror film aficionado and you probably haven't seen it because it's uh you know a classic from yesteryear is it lost to time i don't know just because the title bad seed i mean like you know i think you know when you hear that title i think you think killer kid sure right that's the the that's what made me pick it up like i would have never like i mean so that at least seeped into you know like (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. into the collective consciousness so i would say yeah check out definitely the bad seed that's a legit good movie uh on the saturday night freak show not an ironic good movie a legit a legit good movie um uh some audiences today may look at this movie see that it is i mean it's from 1956 it is in black and white they may see something like that and think eh maybe i shouldn't or maybe you know they might find think it may end up being boring um uh, i say that you definitely also should pick this up um it is a, it's a good movie it's well written um i i try to look through it through the eyes of a 1956 audience um if i didn't it would be a little uh maybe a little talky they do there's a lot of exposition over the psychology of of uh of the child mm-hmm. but um it had to be fascinating for an audience back then, especially a, a taboo subject as a child uh, serial killer. And um, back in the day, the psychology of it all had to be something that nobody knew about except for like, um, uh, whatchamacallit. Um, whatchamacallit? Students of Freud and whatnot. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, uh, there's a word I'm say. Therapists. Yeah, like sure. Uh, yeah. Academics is what I'm trying oh, to say, okay. yes. <laughs> Um, who knew about it? So, I mean, it had to be fascinating, and it is is—it is a good movie. Acting is very well, uh, it's very good all around, it's very well written. Um, uh, I can see how this was uh, uh, staged as a play. Like, this would have been fascinating as a play as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of, I don't know if we said it, a lot of the people who were on the Broadway play yeah, reprised their roles in the yeah, I want to say majority. film version. A majority of them did. Um, and, it's like uh, a drawing room play, right? Where basically, it yeah. basically takes place in the living room of a house. Yes, yeah. most of it does. Yeah. Um, I think Nancy, uh, what's her name? Uh, Nancy St- uh, Stevens, Nancy Kelly. Sorry, uh, won the Tony Award for this um, mm. for uh, this yeah. role. Yeah, mm. um, but it's very good. Um, I liked it. It's uh, it it feels a little long sometimes, but other than that, it, um, it's actually very good. I would definitely recommend picking it up. Uh, I give it three point five random lightning strikes to kill an eight year old out of five. <laughs> Random lightning strikes. To kill it wasn't random. It was God. <laughs> God lightning strikes to kill an eight-year-old. She committed a sin. <laughs> yep. And she went back for that metal, damn metal again. So likes that metal. Had to get it. Was it was hers. <laughs> but well, speaking of God, I kind of I, I like yeah no. Nice speaking segue, right? of God. Yeah. Speaking of God. <laughs> Preach. Speaking of God. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was gonna say I. I kind I liked how <laughs> I, I liked how religion. Your, where was that going? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I liked how religion wasn't the center of this movie because everything that they talked about, it very well easily could have gone that route. Like it's, I, I don't know where the phrase, the bad seed originated, but I know most of the time people associate it with um, the seed of Abraham and which referring to his descendants. Um, Canaanites. Exactly. Yeah. Like that's a lot of people refer. Uh, um, make that reference to Abraham. There's people that think that shit. That no, I know. If you were Canaanite, you were you were evil. Like that, no, that's true. just bad blood. It's going true. Through the, us. The, the descendants of Abraham were the bad seeds. Like that's where I first understood the reference. I, I don't know where it originated, but um, so it very easily could have gone that route. And I think I think isn't the Latin word for semen seed? Isn't isn't it? 
I think, I, think yeah. seed, I think semen means seed in Latin. Anyway, so they very so well could have been Latin. Latin yeah. I hope you're right. Well, I've seen <laughs> it in uh, English. Sorry. It's still a, uh, what do you what, call What do they call Simon? it? The, the no, people no, that no, look up uh, origins of words. A uh... Wordsmith. No. Oh, come on. It's Damn it. Enough. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I, I like that, I like that they didn't go the religion route. That's a rapper. That happened a lot. I don't Sorry. Talk. <laughs> I like that they didn't go the religion route because that happened a lot, especially with older movies like this. Um, I, I like that they went with the whole psychoanalysis. I thought it was very interesting. And um, I agree with everyone. I think that it held up really well. It was great acting, good writing. Um, it, it did, honestly, the, I mean, the ending was, was drug out farther than it should have. But the movie itself didn't really drag enough to lose interest. Like, I never lost interest. I was pretty hooked the entire movie. Um, which, it, with black and white movies, nowadays with modern audience, it's, it's kind of hard to do that a lot of times. So, yeah, I think it still holds up. I thought it was great. And, uh, yeah, I recommend it for sure. The religious version of this movie is called The Omen. Yes, they, there, is the no, right. the there is no religion, have the there is no religion in this because you're dealing with science. The <laughs> right, thing that yeah. murdered religion. That, that's so what I'm it's saying. like, this is a. I mean, I would Murder. say, I mean, in my own like fundamentalist bull, I'd be like, this is a communist movie, you know, because it's about, you know, well, it's about eugenic. I mean, if you believe in what the science that this movie's pushing, then you have to seriously look at, well, well, Jews are greedy. Uh, black people are less intelligent. I mean, you have, if you're going to look at a science fucking list of like, you know, this is what the danger of you of eugenics, right? Is you can't fucking say, well, it's it's not nature versus nurture, right? It's not the education people get. It's not, and nope, it's in their blood. There's no fix in this, you know? It's like, it's a pretty dismal uh, scientific belief, if you ask me. I mean, this is why so many atrocities in mankind have uh, dealt with eugenics, you know? But as a movie... It's fucking so goddamn great. Uh, I mean, I love that. It's so fascinating because it's written in that play style, right? Mm, very much. Where, and this is also probably the same reason I like Woody Allen movies. I like it when a character just talks aloud. And you know it's their inner thoughts. Mm. But for a movie, it's just interesting to have somebody like just, just sitting there fucking. Especially Leroy. Yeah. Oh, like it's awesome. All monologue. And I think that's the opposite of how we make how we used to make movies versus how we make movies nowadays. Or how we make movies nowadays, everything's just based on how great your fucking picture looks. And but and back then, it's just like, what? It's gonna be black and white. What do you want? I mean, like, you gotta have these people say some shit. You know, I think that's more important to uh, uh, movies. And I think that's why this movie. I mean, yeah, it's a little long. What, what did we say the running time? Two hours, nine minutes? Like Two hours, okay. So, oh, so it, did, yeah, it, so like it was long. Yeah. It didn't feel long. It was long. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it still, like, moves. It just moves. There's not a lot of, like, slow moments. There's always conversation going on. There's always something dealing with what uh, uh, the uh, story. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. This is one of my favorite movies. I love it. You should all watch it. Uh, this is one of those movies you can be like, Hey, Grandma, you know, like one of my favorite movies is The Bad Seed, you know, <laughs> like, you know, talk to some of your elders about this, you know, they probably remember it. And and uh, I even though the book is so hard to get through, I'm getting through it. But man, you know, I mean, I would even say try to read the book just because you'll get so much more of the the idea of will. I mean, William March mostly wrote about psychology and eugenics and shit like that. I mean, this is what people are doing. They're trying to figure out how to fix humans through fucking uh, human intervention, you know, which is scary. That means the death of humans, the death of other humans. <laughs> so that's why I, I do think this is one of my favorite scary movies is because... Whoa! You well, just don't like, you know. You don't see many be movies. On the list? Scary movie list. It might be. Oh, I, I'm getting. I'm throwing it. This on feels like off. a fluid list. <laughs> oh, I know, right? It's very. It's, it's uh, coming up, but he doesn't even yeah. know what the list is for sure. <laughs> it's yeah. I'm getting close on it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I completely recommend this movie. Uh, watch it with your mom. Let her know you like good movies too. There you go. <laughs> yeah, be like Sima. <laughs> there you go. All right, so next, we're gonna tell you. Well, Sean's gonna tell us not now. What we're gonna watch next week after oh, shit. Travis calls us. That's right. So now you gotta t- stay tuned all the way to the oh, end shit. to you find know. out what Damn. we're watching next week. But here we go. Travis's best favorite favorite horror movie. Top Stop 10. it, Colin. Favorite. 
of all time. All right, here I go. Are you gonna go? This is in. in this is in no particular order. Uh, I, no, I want one through ten. Uh, I couldn't possibly <laughs> choose a you know a list in order because I mean even this list is a changing thing. This is just all I could think of in the past, like whatever. You didn't even write it down. The, well, the, I did, but I I forgot it. So I'm going <laughs> off the top of my head. So okay, uh, without further ado, in the mouth of madness. I love In the Mouth of Madness because it breaks down the realities and uh, shows you tr- the meaning of true horror, H.P. Lovecraft style. Uh, I'll go with Dario Argento Presents, <laughs> Umberto, uh, Umberto, uh, Lamberto Bava? L- yeah, Lamberto, uh, Umberto. Yeah, Lamberto, Lamberto Bava's Demons. I love Demons because if you like Dawn of the Dead, <laughs> it's just that <laughs> times a hundred. <laughs> um, I like... Uh, Okay, these are two that like I just throw in constantly. Uh, Friday Thirteenth Part Two, because it it added something a little different than the the uh, just the ripping off of Halloween. And I mean, come on, created Jason. You know, the ending where a fucking head is on a table with candles like blew my mind. Like that alone was like, there's a movie in that alone. Like holy shit, this whole movie hasn't been talking about no fucking like head on a table like. <laughs> So that movie. I was gonna say why two has the best kills. You think two or? has the best? Like it has the Jason story. Like yeah. everything mm, else is just Jason okay, killing yeah. people. Blah, blah blah. Two is the Jason story. Yeah. The fucking meat of the mythology. Uh, and Child's Play meat. two. Just because if you want to talk about like monsters coming to life, you know, I mean, Child's Play two is one of the best. Uh, special effects movies. Comes out of that door, slamming the fucking yardstick into oh, his dude. hand, going after the teacher. Naughty, naughty, Mrs. Kettlebomb, or some, whatever her name is. Kettleworth, I don't know her fucking name. Okay, so what is that, four? That's four. Okay, so then I'm going to go with um, Lucio Fulci's uh, The Beyond. I knew, if you yeah. had In the Mouth of Madness. You, you have, have to, to have, have the, the Beyond, because I love the breakdown of reality. Down. I love. I mean, that's all we have. All we have is reality, so once you start breaking that shit down, dude, that's pure horror. Uh, Suspiria, um, just because it's beautifully lit. You know, it's got the crazy fucking lighting and the crazy gore and just sound. I mean, that could be, I swear to God, if you put any other uh, soundtrack on, on Suspiria, it could be so fucking boring. But just because that soundtrack... Ah, ah, Especially if you see it genius. before the Anchor Bay version where they, they actually turn the volume down. Like, I've they, seen this they, oh, it's so loud. It's loud It is fuck. fucking loud, <laughs> yeah. dude. That actually sucks. I will never yeah. buy that version. I think it's probably that. the one you have if you have it. I don't have it because oh, it's coming okay. on Blu-ray soon from yeah, Synapse, 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 right? putting it out there. Synapse, 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 whatever. One of them. Yeah. So what is that, six? Synapse. Mm-hmm. Six. Okay, so then I, I got to go with uh, Psycho just because Psycho... Is just scary. I just remember being a kid. <laughs> I judge a movie how scary it is if I'm falling asleep, but I hear screaming and I open my eyes and I'm still shocked by what I see. <laughs> I'm so tired. I shouldn't care, but I'm still like, oh my God. And that was psycho for me. Um, I saw it when I was really young. The Wolfman. The Wolfman. I think every every horror movie has basically been based off of the idea that when people came, like World War Two was the last time people um, were able to like, or not the last time. I mean, it was the first time people were able to live through their um, dismemberment. You know what I mean? So that's why you have all these disfigured, ugly people walking around. Well, people are scared of them. That way, that kind of like, uh, whatever, that feeling is what created the modern American horror movie, right? Uh, disfigured people from war that are not accepted and appreciated by the society they return to. And I think Wolfman does that in a better way than like any other movie, right? Because you don't need an ugly man. You just have the, you know, the dude turning into a wolf and blah, 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 blah. So uh, beautiful movie. Oh my God. Where am I? I have two left. That's eight. eight. Yep. Two left. (laughs) I am going to have to pick. I was going to pick the bad seed. But now you guys called me out on it. Well, so I feel like I got it. But I love the bad scene. It's one of my favorite horror movies. It is. It's one of my favorite horror movies. It is one of my favorites. Um, it drives me crazy. Um, even though I think it's more sad. But I think that's why I like it. I think it's way more tragic than any other horror movie ever fucking made. Like, I, like if I was watching this, I mean, shit, I probably didn't. I, I mean, I couldn't even help myself here. Like, 
Like, if I start this movie by myself, I will fucking cry from the beginning to the end. I think it's so tragic. It's like, this is horror. This is horror. Um, it's not the same type of horror as you're no. used to, like the jump scares and the whatever. But this is the horror, like, if you actually had to deal with it, this is what you got to deal so with. So it is on your list? Yeah, that I just said it. Like just okay. said, yeah, yeah, I just said it on my list. <laughs> okay, what was number nine? I feel like I went through yeah, Nine Living Dead. Dead. That was number yeah, nine. That was number nine. nine. <laughs> it's name one. Well, I guess, uh, I think I... Last one. So Nine Living Dead. Nine Living Dead is my last one because, once again, you got a beautiful, like, uh, it's all about the characters, right? It's all about how these people deal with it. Like, every good horror should be about the people, not necessarily just the supernatural or the guy with the knife, right? Mm. And uh, Nine Living Dead is probably, like, the best when it comes to like any sort of a societal comedy. This is the original, the black and white. Yeah, for sure. I only talk about black and whites. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's my list. Watch it this Halloween. I hope it scares you. I hope you find it interesting. I hope you will write us and tell us uh, if it was shit or not. Yeah, shit or not. Yeah. That's a new yeah, like, category within the Travis's email. horror list is absolute shit. <laughs> or you agree like 100%. We, we want to know. motherfuckers. Yeah. And you've got one week to watch all of those movies. One week. Before. My most intense <laughs> horror movies are Inside, I Spit on Your Grave. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. Shut his mic off. I know. You're done. I can't handle it. We need a list of 20. Yeah. No more. <laughs> uh, but next week, the reason why you have to watch them all is because next week, Sean's going to have a whole new list for you when oh. he brings us his pick of Return of the Living Dead. Three. Holy shit. This is we've graduated from the summer of sequels to the, the fall summer. of three equals. The fall of three equals. Maybe. Is that what they call it? Oh, the fall of freequels? Is that a The freequels. What we call the yeah, freequels. There you go. Freakles. The fall of nice. freequels. There All it right. is. So there it is. We'll be watching Return of the Living Dead. Is it part three or just three? I think it's part three. No, it's three. Return of the Living Dead three next that week that on well, the Saturday sometimes night it says part, freak show. Sometimes it doesn't. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>